Hey, yeah, man, I'm totally excited to play bass for you. Yeah, no, no, I definitely also play upright bass too. So as an electric bass player, the first thing you should check out is Franz Mandel's new method for double bass, because it outlines the 1-2-4 method of fretting. Now if you've been practicing electric bass with a one finger per fret method this entire time, you're kind of going to be having a little bit of a tricky time adjusting to the upright bass because 1-2-4 is the name of the game here. If you've been practicing with 1-2-4 on electric bass, you're going to have a lot easier time transitioning to upright. Now the first exercise that we're going to check out on upright is playing an F major scale in what upright bass players call the half position and what electric bass players might call the first position. Half position basically corresponds to frets 1, 2, and 3. But oh no, there are no frets on the upright bass. It is a fretless instrument, of course. So what we're gonna have to do is train our muscle memory to try and figure out exactly where the notes are. Now you notice that I play that all the way up to the B flat on the G string. I did that just kind of to incorporate all the notes in the half position and take the knowledge that we already know on electric bass and apply it to upright. Now the thing here is that you really want to instill muscle memory. You want to try and figure out where the heck all of these different notes are. Now on a typical three quarter scale upright bass, you're gonna have a scale length of between 42 inches and 44 inches. Generally speaking, three quarter size upright basses are kind of the norm unless you're playing in symphony orchestras, then you're playing full size double basses. You also have five eighths, seven eighths, and half scale upright basses. But most of the time, three quarter scales is usually the way that people go. When we're practicing with the left hand, we wanna make sure that we have nice curved fingers. And also a thing that I've found personally for myself is that my intonation is a lot better if my elbow is way up like this. If my elbow goes down too far, I end up playing very sharp. The other thing that we want to do is we want to slot the upright bass in the crease between the leg and the groin. And that's going to kind of be our fulcrum point so that when we're pressing down on the strings, we're pressing the bass into us, thus allowing us to play with a lot more force without hurting ourselves and relying entirely upon the hand to grip the bass. Now when we're plucking upright bass, we're going to be using a slightly different pizzicato technique than from electric. Instead of alternating between our first and our second fingers, we're instead going to use the first and second fingers in concert like this. The reason for this is that we want to get as much meat of the fingers on the strings as possible to get that really big fat sound. The other thing that we have to sort of think about is that instead of just using the muscles in our hands, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of whip the forearm against the bass in this sort of chicken wing fashion. Let me sort of show you. And this sort of whip action from the elbow helps deliver a lot more strength and pressure into the strings. This is especially helpful when you're playing unamplified. I do not recommend that if you're an electric bass player making the switch, because it's really hard to do that, but it also gets a really big, full, fat, jazz, pizzicato sound. If you're an electric bass player, I also recommend getting low tension strings. We really don't have anything to prove by getting high tension strings. That's usually more a classical sort of thing. So keep it light, don't hurt yourself. Hey Adam, catch! Good point, Adam. I should be practicing with a bow. Now, the thing with upright bass is that it's a fretless instrument, and with all fretless instruments, intonation is pretty key. Now, you can get a good sense of intonation with a pizzicato technique, but there's nothing quite like practicing with a bow to really figure out where your flaws are in your playing. Now, it doesn't even have to be a good bow. The reason why I was comfortable with doing that stunt is because this is just a plastic bow. If this was a mahogany bow, I would definitely not have done that. Anyway, since this is kind of a crappy bow, and this is kind of a crappy plywood bass, this isn't going to sound so hot. But at the same time, this is really going to show you where my intonation is, which hopefully is not that bad. Let's see. Okay, not terrible. The thing I always like into practicing a bow with is you're sort of sawing wood. Not a very pleasant sound most of the time if you're doing it for intonation practice, especially if you're an electric player where you're not actually practicing these sort of bowings, but it is a very useful thing to do, so get your hands on a bow. Yeah, and run away too. So in the past couple days, I did a couple gigs on upright bass. It's really challenging and sort of outside of my comfort zone, but it's a lot of fun taking that knowledge that I have in electric bass and applying it to this instrument, which is completely different. One of these gigs was a concert at William Patterson University with singers Will and Anthony Nunziata. <laughs> The other 
other gig was a media event for a show called American Dance Machine, and that gig was actually completely unamplified, so you really see me digging in there. Adam Neely's Bass Lessons. Hope you like this. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Also, let me know if you have any other ideas and any questions on upright bass playing. I do not pretend to be an upright bass player, but I know enough to get by and I can apply the musical knowledge that I have on electric bass to upright pretty easily. Until next time, bass. Bass.